Ethereum tagged $3,500 the other day. Does that mean it's the beginning of the bear market or is it just a correction? Well, that's what we're going to look at in today's video. So if you like the content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you don't know me by now, my name is Jiggy. I'm the award-winning author of The Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro, been featured in the best-selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008, where I used to focus exclusively on currencies, but now exclusive on cryptocurrency. So let's dive straight in. Right, so I'll put up a video that we did not that long ago on Ethereum. It was on... November 19th, you know, is a key time for Bitcoin and Ethereum, November 19th. And what we said here, this is really important because, you know, Elliott Wave and Fibonacci is probably the most underrated, powerful tool. Because what we said in advance is we've got this five wave structure coming towards the top over here. And what we anticipate next is a correction, a minimum of a downside movement. And then we should anticipate some type of correction and then a movement to the downside in this price and time zone. We said that ahead of time because the price at the time of doing this video on the 19th if you go back and look at it was here right so what we're going to look at today is what happened next right what what did happen we're going to look at the data so this is a live chart of ethereum right a live chart of ethereum and i just wanted to kind of do a quick recap look at this this blue arrow over here was the, this over here then in the video we said we should anticipate this movement to the upside, let me pull up this annotation so you can see what I'm going on about. This movement to the upside, we should anticipate. And then what happened? You know, like, it's not always not like magic. It's just probabilities, never certainties, right? This, we're going to go into this. What does this look like? And then we should anticipate a movement to the downside to finish off a minimum of a three-legged correction. And then what did we get? The beginning of the other day was this movement here. Now we said Ethereum tagged, let's just zoom in over here, Ethereum tagged 3,500, but if you look at the price down here, this over here, it's only 4,100. You might be thinking, oh, hang on a second, where's the 3,500? So we can use something called candlesticks, and candlesticks tells us the range of the price on the day, right? So if we just get rid of these, and the price of the range, we had this big ranging bar and then the market bought it back up, right? Bought it back up and brought the price over here. So the price actually went to a low of, what was it? It was around, yeah, just around the $3,500 mark and it went back up. So we're going to look at what's likely to occur next using Elliott Wave and Fibonacci. So here's some of the, just the, the core, core, core basics. Now let me see if I can pull this up. Yeah, here we go. It's brilliant. Now this is a chart that I use for a lot of my lessons and my courses. And the main thing I wanted to bring up here is a market typically moves in a five wave sequence. You know, 50, 60, 70, 80% of the time, it's really, really clear. It's clear with Ethereum right now. And what we should anticipate after any five wave sequence is a minimum of an ABC correction. More often than not, that's what typically happens. And that's what we're using to give us some real scope on Ethereum when we're looking at the pattern over here. And by the way, if you're new to Ethereum, so not to Ethereum, to Elliott Wave and Fibonacci, Take my free Elliott Wave and Fibonacci Masterclass. It's in the link below, and it shows you how to get the foundation, the real core basics, and you have the opportunity to buy one of my courses, which is running at a massive discount at the moment. But the main thing here is we're seeing this one, two, three, four, five wave sequence to the upside, and I'm just going to change it back to line data, which is it just gets rid of the noise, right? It keeps the chart much, much cleaner. And then what we're anticipating, just like the theory, is a like a nice A, B, and then a C. Right, and we've got some time and price projections put in advance, you know, down here. Will it reach this? We're not sure, but that's what we've got projected. So that's what we're going to look at today, and we're going to break it down in a bit more detail. So we're going to start with some basics. Let me just get rid of this now. First of all, I like to look at the weekly. So that's in the top left-hand corner, the weekly momentum. Clearly, the weekly momentum is bearish, which means sideways to down, means the blue line and the red line are pointing down. But the blue line is in this deeply oversold zone. So we're talking about maybe one, two, two weeks, two weeks, give or take, thereabouts. We're not sure, but two weeks. Expect sideways to down. And then we're going to look into, we're going to focus on the daily chart, right? I'm going to, a couple of things I want to focus on. First of all, if we look at the daily momentum, so we're looking at basically the rhythm and the momentum of the market on different time frames, And it's saying on the overall, the weekly is down 
and the bearish is now, so the daily is now also pointing down. So we've got two time frames, dual time frames, which means two pointing down. Weekly is pointing down and daily is pointing down. So the probability is we should expect sideways to down, right? That's a massive clue for us because we can only do probabilities and never certainties. Anyone that says they're certain about the market, they've already lost because you're just going to overexpose yourself. So what I wanted to do, first of all, was this correction over here. This over here, you know, this movement here. We can call it an A, B, C, D, E. We can call it like a bit more of a complex correction. You know, these are not as common, but, you know, you do see them unfold like this, A, B, C, D, E. But the main thing is that they're overlapping waves, right? Because one of the things they teach in the masterclass, which again is in the link below, it's free, is we want to know, is the market in an impulsive part? So, so this is impulsive, or is it in a corrective part of the market? So this down here is actually impulsive because there's no overlapping waves, nice five wave structure, one, two, three, four, five. But this part here is clearly a correction because we've got these overlapping waves, overlapping waves. And that gives us a massive clue on what's likely to occur next. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm just gonna backtrack a little bit because often we can project with high probability on what's likely to occur. So let's just do a quick retracement. This is one of the main tools that you wanna have in your arsenal to read the markets like a pro is if we just zoom in like this more often than not the market will retrace back to 50 percent 62 percent 78.6 funny enough it hit all three right it hit there boom and then it hit the 62 and when it made a lower low we would have assumed that this was going to continue to the downside but it made one more surge to the upside 78.6 percent and is likely to continue to the downside right because weekly is pointing down and the daily momentum is pointing down what's the difference with this one and the other ones, look at the weekly momentum, the daily momentum. The blue line now is officially below the red. Can you see that? Right? And that, that requires patience because over here, the momentum on the daily was up. So you, ideally what you want to do is wait, 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 wait. And then either when it's overbought, then you can look at a lower time frame or wait for this reversal and then the market move to the downside. So what we're going to finish on today, keeping it really, really simple, is what are the typical price targets so we've already drawn the price targets the, the the normal price targets where's this line here we go which is down here but now we can get a bit more precise so what can we do right well let's just get rid of this okay wave c so what we're looking for now overall i'm going to get rid of this now this is we don't need that it's going to be confusing for you what we need now is we're looking at what looks like an a b and some type of c you might be thinking, what you get us nowhere, you know, it's not quite hitting this zone over here. Well, these are just zones and typical probability zones. But again, if the weekly momentum reverses and we see some really pattern, we've got momentum, pattern, price, and time analysis. You know, we're looking for three of the four to line up. And we always want to take the momentum into consideration. Always want to trade and invest in the direction of the macro and the intermediate momentum. So what can we do here? So what we're going to do, very, very simple. I cover this in a bit more depth in the masterclass, is we're going to measure this wave A and we're going to project it forward from this wave B. And the most typical common price targets for a wave C is 100% to a 1.618 of wave 1. So we measured wave 1, projected it from B, and this down here is a typical next price target, which we actually tagged the other day when we look at candles, um, but we didn't close in that price range, and then this one over here. And you can see this one also over um, overlaps the 50% retracement, right? So this one's going to be more probable, right? They're going to get downside movement because the market was showing a lot of weakness. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do an external retracement. Again, I cover this in the masterclass. We're going to measure this high to this low, low to this high. This is a relationship. The typical is 1.618, right? So now we've got this, this zone over here. Right, so we've got these two zones over here. And we just do a bit of price, sorry, time analysis. Time analysis is going to be simple. What we're going to do, I haven't seen anyone do time. Time is so powerful. What we're going to do is we're going to measure how long did it take for this wave A to form? How long in number of days? And then we're simply going to project that forward. And there's normally a ratio. So I have 100% to 1.618 is the most common, most common. Uh, and the minimum is one, uh, 0.618. So we're going to measure this to here to here. And we're going to project it from up here. And the two main numbers that we want is going to be 1.618 and 1, which is 100. 
So now we've got this second. This is like a, now a minimum price and time zone down here and here. So we can expect these to be hit. Also keep in mind that the momentum is pointing downwards. So momentum on the weekly is down. The daily is down. So there's two momentum indicators on two time frames. We've got pattern. So we've got this corrective pattern sequence. We've got this ABC forming. So we've got pattern. There's two things. Now we've got these two price targets. Again, that haven't been hit on closing data. So if we look on the candle again, you'll see this wick. This is, this is called a wick. If you're not familiar with candles, you have this, the main body of the candle and then the line going here is the wick. So the price th that day went down here and then came back up. But we're looking for a close in this range. So again, sideways to down still for a few more days. So that's pattern, price, and momentum. And then last but not least is time, right? These two red lines here is basically measuring a ratio between how long it took the wave A to form and how long we should anticipate a minimum for the wave C. But the typical correction zones are down here. So will it reach down here? I don't know, man. The bullish behavior might come in sooner than anticipated. So now let's just finish off with if it does unfold like this, if being the operative word, because hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat it a million more times, we can only do probabilities and never certainties. Only probabilities and never certainties. But we're looking to get the edge in our favor by looking at the information available. And here we're looking at pattern, price, time, and momentum. And by the way, if you haven't taken my Fibonacci and Elliott Wave Masterclass, is in the link below. I've broken it down into layman's terms so you can understand and get a real feel for the market. And if you buy one of my courses, you'll get invited to my private Telegram group where you'll get exclusive premier access to all YouTube content. And we also have a few other bonuses that we do like workshops, et cetera, et cetera. So now let's just finish on macro picture. Just let's just focus on this part of the market, right? This part, let's just get rid of the momentum indicator for a second. What we're going to look at is We've got this five wave sequence. I believe this is, by the way, a wave one of a wave five, right? A wave one of a wave five. I believe we're going to see this now. What we're looking at is A, B, C. So nothing's changed, you know, but we might just find it finishes earlier than as opposed to down here, right? Either it's going to overextend to over here or it may finish around here or here, right? Like this. And that's what we said pretty much before, right? This is, you know, the analysis from the 19th was the 19th. 19th of November, you can see it just playing out. And it's good to go back and check. Good, Go back and check because then you'll see the power of Elliott Wave and Fibonacci ratios, how you can read the markets, the waves within the waves. And what, because we're measuring psychology, fear and greed, optimism and pessimism, fear of missing out, panic buying behavior, profit taking behavior. That's what 90% of the market is. It's speculation. So we want to take that into account and add that into our strategies if possible. So if it does unfold like this, what do we anticipate next? Well, it's going to be a continuation. Right? We're not going to do price projections for this because we want to wait for it to happen, but we're looking for a continuation to the upside. Right? That's what we're looking for. That's what I'm anticipating. A continuation to the upside. We can get rid of this line. I don't know what this line is. Oh, it was a typical correction, a maximum correction. Yeah, but this is what we're, you know, we will see a, $10,000 Ethereum this year? I think so. I think so. Looking at what we're planning for Bitcoin and everything else. So there you have it. You know, Ethereum's going for its correction. Sideways to down for three to five days. Weekly momentum is beginning to become oversold. So I reckon one or two weeks, maybe sideways to down, hit these time zones. Where's the time? We're talking about the 10th of December to the 16th as the minimum. But the most typical is actually the 30th of December. Will it reach down? I'm not sure doesn't look that way, uh, to the 16th of January, right? So we've got two kind of time targets and zones. But as the market unfolds, we'll get more information. And as the waves unfold, we'll get more information. And then we can kind of get very, very precise to finalize. So there you have it. Ethereum hit 3,500. Should we be panicked? Hey, look, I think we're still going to go through a bit more of a correction as a whole of the markets. We have some outliers. But when we do get a reversal, I think we're going to see that amazing last leg of the bull run and that's where 80% of all profits are going to be made. So you're going to really be prepared for that. So let's finish on a quote. I think it's really relevant because it's in the context of Elliot and Fibonacci. And this guy is Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci is simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. You'll notice on my charts, they're really clean, right? They're really clean. They don't have five different moving averages. We're not using 
volume. We're not using MACD. We're not using, I don't know, there's 50 other indicators we could use with there's thousands of indicators. Then there's all these other data that we can use. We can add in stock to flow. We can add in new pool. We can add in, you know, number of wallets open. We can add in so much data. But ultimately, we want to use the 80% or the 20% that's going to give us 80% of the value. And that's how I use Elliott Wave and Fibonacci. And, and Bitcoin, I see as the major indicator of the market. But Bitcoin and Ethereum have to have a very close relationship, have a very close relationship, and they kind of mimic each other. And if one of the patterns is not that clear, we can lean on the other one to say, okay, it looks like this and vice versa. So there you have it. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Keep things simple. Take my free Elliott Wave and Fibonacci masterclass. It's in the link below. It helps you read the markets, not only with Ethereum and Bitcoin, but for all cryptocurrency. And 60, 70, 80% of the time, the patterns are really clear and really identifiable. And when they are, we're going to use that information to our advantage on buying positions, holding positions, and selling positions, and also stand aside. Because if you're looking to get into a position and it's going through a particular correction and it has hit a particular ratio on a Fibonacci perspective, you can just stand aside and say, I'm going to wait, I'm going to be patient. And if my price target gets hit, then you buy so you can maximize your upside, minimize your downside. So there you have it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. I appreciate you. Keep training and I'll see you soon.